It's your brother Larry Adeneko. Welcoming you to the Really Really Knowing God channel and bringing you vital enrichment in the knowledge of God. All powered by the Pastor Larry Adeneko Center for Education, the PLACE. <music> This is a daily gem devotional, making you a gem to your generation and a gemstone upon the crown of Jesus Christ. We are sharing truth this morning on how sins can result in sickness. And that's coming from Matthew chapter 9, 1 through 8, by the grace of God today. Let us pray together. Father, we bless your name. God give you glory for the beautiful weekend that you have granted unto us. Be blessed. As we go on to share together this morning, we ask, Lord, that you help us at what we do for the sake of your people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we ask it. Amen. Hallelujah. Matthew 9, from 1. So he got into a boat, crossed over, and he came to his own city. And behold, they brought to him a paralytic lying on a bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, said to the paralytic, Son, be of good cheer, your sins are forgiven you. And at once some of the scribes said within themselves, This man blasphemes. But Jesus, knowing their thoughts, said, Why do you think evil in your heart? For which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you, or to say arise and walk? But that you may know that the Son of Man has power not to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, Arise, take your bed, and go to your house. And he arose and departed to his house. Now when the multitude saw it, they marveled and they glorified God, who had given such power to men. Uh, praise God. Uh, very quickly, the first thing is that uh, uh, these guys have said, please leave our pit, our place, leave our coast, leave our region. We really appreciate our pigs and you know things like that. You remember that story? So he got into a boat and crossed over uh, to the other side, and then probably Capernaum. Okay, and then they brought unto him a paralytic lying on the bed. And when Jesus saw their faith, said to the paralytic, "Son, be of good cheer; your sins are forgiven." Let's see something there. First of all. When Jesus saw their faith. At other times we have referred to this particular story, the details of which are not particularly given here, but that's the story of where some uh, people carried their friend up a flight of stairs, got to the top, untied the roof, dropped, you know, the whole thing right in front of Jesus Christ. We spoke about their boldness, their courage, their determination, their effort. You know, we spoke about all that. You remember very, very well. But you see, what I want us to focus upon today is something different. And that, well, all that their effort is what Jesus called uh, their faith. Okay, but let's see something here. Uh, the Bible, Jesus says, uh, the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, he didn't say when Jesus saw his faith. He said, when Jesus saw their faith, in other words, the paralytic and the people who brought him, who went through all those things, all of them together, their faith. It's because the paralytic, paralytic also had faith. So when they were carrying him riskily up this flight of stairs and everything, they were going to drop him, you know, by four ropes and things like that. It was all very, very risky, but he had faith. His friends also, they had faith. And the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, not just his faith. Remember that we have always said something like, it will be unto you according to your faith. Now, this one is the plural thing, their faith. In other words, this paralytic man did something I want to talk about today. Make sure you surround yourself with people of faith. That's what this guy did. He surrounded himself with people who had faith, people who believed in him, people who he believed in, and also people who together, they believed God together in agreement. Oh, that's wonderful. And I think we should, we should share that this morning. Make sure the people you surround yourself with are people of faith, people who believe God, people who say this is the word, and therefore we are standing by it, you know. Such people, uh, you know, in Jesus' mighty name, unlike the kind of people that need to be put out when you want to pray prayer of faith. When Jesus wanted to pray for the little girl, he put out a lot of people. When, Jesus, when Peter wanted to pray for Dorcas, otherwise called Tabitha, he put out a lot of people. Now, there are some people that need to be put out. Now, you don't need such people around you. You need the kind of people that are around this man. Those are the kind of people you need around you. Praise God. So, we move on now. And then the, some of the scribes, you know, you, uh, we have said here before, the scribes were the um, were equivalent of their eggheads, their academics, their, um, what else we call them now? You know, the, the ones who are supposed to be experts in the law and people who can analyze and, you know, and all that. So, they began to say, within themselves this man blasphemes now jesus knowing their thoughts why are you thinking evil in your heart which one is easier to say we'll come back to all that later now um he said they said um 
the reason they said the man back uh, Jesus was blasphemous was that because he said he had you know let, let's go back to it and it says be of good cheer your sins are forgiven you it's because of that forgiveness statement that's why they began to think that way actually according to their tradition and their law they were correct when they would think how can you a man say you are forgiving some other person they were you know right to think that way but if you look at the way they spoke this man blasphemes it was like in the present continuous this this jesus is um habitually blaspheming which would be completely wrong that was not what happened you know and jesus said why are you thinking evil in your heart which one is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or arise and walk and i think we spoke about this sometime in the past that what jesus was teaching us here is that it was easier for him to say um your uh, your uh, sins are forgiven you or no no easier to say arise and walk was easier than your sins are forgiven you i'm saying your sins are forgiven you are quarreling with i could have said arise and walk and the man will have arisen and walked okay but i said this one for certain reasons now we learn a lesson from there arise and walk was actually easier for jesus to say and to effect than to say your sins are forgiven that's what jesus was trying to teach us there in other words salvation redemption and the power of it is actually a lot lot more than the power to get to get healings done and i think that should encourage somebody you remember in psalm in psalm 103 i don't really have too much time these days i want to try and keep within a 10 uh, minutes by all means um in psalm 103 as a popular and bless the Lord, my soul, all within me, bless the Lord, my soul, but who forgives your iniquities, who heals your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction. Yeah, forgives your iniquities, heals your diseases. In other words, these things they go together. But you see, the 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 forgiving your iniquity or your sin is number one, it heals your diseases, is only um side a side benefit of the main thing praise god so jesus was saying i could have said you know get healed and go and that was a lot lot easier for me but i spoke about the forgiveness of sins for some reason so that you guys may know so we learn a lesson from there it's actually easier to get healed than to get saved think about the fact that the power that got you saved is a lot lot bigger than the one that will get you healed it can make it easier for you to obtain your miracles from god and move forward by the grace of god amen the second thing we want to see here is that Jesus linked his sickness with his uh, with his salvation? He says, "Be of good cheer; your sins are forgiven you." In other words, that sickness came there because of sin, and the moment the sins get forgiven, then the sickness must go. Because you see, at times, <clears throat> Satan uses some of these things that you have, you engage yourself in, you um you practice you have not worked upon you have not allowed it to go you have ignored it that thing is part of your life and all those things you allow room for satan to stretch his hands and inflict you with disease and things that ought not to be your portion at all now that's what happened with this man jesus says your sins are forgiven because he could see that it was some sin loophole that allowed that thing to tie to uh, not tie is not the word to attach itself to him to to cling to him to let the disease be upon him so he attacked it at the root cause which was the sin and that's what i'm saying to some people this morning some of the diseases you actually suffer may actually re result from sin you want to remember again that in um, in the book of john i think we read this uh, almost three years ago now if not more than three years ago we may want to come back to some of these places very soon in john chapter 5 uh, Jesus had healed somebody, take up your bed and walk and all that. And um, around, okay, verse 14, afterward, Jesus found him in the temple and said to him, See, you have been made well. Sin no more, lest the worst thing will come unto you. I mean, will come upon you. In other words, sin had a link with that disease that, was, that had grounded the man for so long. Now, so also we see here, it says, your sins are forgiven. That's the basis for him to take up his bed and walk. So there is a connection between the two. Okay, Jesus says, go and sin no more. In other words, do not sin habitually anymore. That's what he told that person. And we see it in Matthew here. So it is good for us to know that Satan can take that opportunity, use that avenue, that loophole, that, uh, what else now, do we call it now, and use that to afflict us with Ill illnesses. Therefore, 
immediately do not wait until when you are about to pray immediately you notice that something is wrong something is not correct something is sinful something is negative something is ungodlike something will not be god happy immediately confess it and get it cleansed by the power in the blood of jesus christ instantly do not wait until later praise the lord okay then so uh, we have spoken about why you think evil in your heart. It's easier to say we have spoken much about that. But that you may know that the Son of Man had power now to forgive sins. He now said the easier one. Arise, take up your bed and go to your house. And the man arose and went to his house. And the Bible says, when the multitude saw it, they marveled and glorified God who had given such power to men. What again do we see from that? The ordinary people will always rejoice, will always be excited at the power of God, at the grace of God, at the mercy of God in the life of somebody or the other. It is the experts who always have questions. It is the experts who always have things to say. It is the people who really think they know, they really know, the, you know, they are the ones who often have issues. You know, the average common man there is just busy glorifying God that God has done well. It is the scribes that we found as, as, we, as we find here, they are, they, they are the ones who uh, always have issues. God help us in the mighty name of Jesus. It's so beautiful to have the simplicity of Christ, the simplicity in Christ. That's why it says that, except you, you be converted and become like little rich children in their simplicity. Yeah, some of the things of the kingdom of heaven you will never get. Ah, well, may God help us in Jesus' mighty name. Let me stop here. Like I said, I want to really, really try and keep within our 10 minutes as much as possible uh, this time around and just leave it in the next day. You know, or the next occasion uh, that we come around. Thank you very much for sharing time with us today. We really do appreciate you. Please help us to do your best to grow this channel and increase those numbers you find there. Thank you. God bless you.